John Hamilton with Holland Pump. Uh, we're going to discuss the double diaphragm pump now. It's a very good uh, pump to do a lot of small dewatering jobs, but very versatile. So, uh, you can do uh, whistles with them, Kelly wells, uh, small header systems even. They will pump slurry and stuff like that. We pump sewage. So they're very versatile. They're very simple also. So they got a little one cylinder diesel engine that hardly uses any fuel. So uh, pretty good little pump. So first of all, as far as like the service on the pump, they're very simple. The gearbox changed the gear oil, 90 weight gear oil every thousand hours. It has grease fittings right here on the bearing knuckles, grease them every service also. The inspection, so the diaphragms are made out of several different materials. Probably the one that holds up the best is the red one. It's kind of like a plastic one. So you will see, as you can tell on the upstroke, it's kind of creased. That's gonna happen. Uh, probably a good in indication when this thing is gonna fail, you'll start seeing you get like white there, you know, when you keep, you know, creasing something or bending it back and forth, you'll, you'll start to see it kind of turn a different color down these lines and it's probably going to split by then. So I would say some manufacturers say they can get two, 3,000 hours out of them. I would, I would say, you know, 1,000 to 1,500 hours and you need to start looking at them pretty hard. Other than that, pretty simple. Uh, this is a positive displacement pump, so it pumps water and air, so you never want to restrict the discharge. You never want to put a blank on it or anything like that. Uh, so any positive displacement pump, they'll never put any restriction on the discharge. Uh, the way you can test these, you don't have to put water in them, but because they do have rubber flappers and sometimes they've been sitting, gets, they could get a little stiff and not be sealing right. Put some water in it, put a blank uh, vacuum test it on it, and start it up. So, on these, there's no vacuum relief or anything. So, I mean, they should hold good 25 inches or, or more. Other inspections when you're doing your service, you have two intake flappers, one for each, for each diaphragm, and, <clears throat> and two discharge flappers. And the way they work, so if this thing's stroking up, and it's pulling water in, that flapper is going to come up. This one, the vacuum is going to pull down, and when it strokes down, they're just going to reverse. And then flappers are opening and closing, opening and closing. So they have a, they're about that big. They have a metal weight on them to keep bringing them down. Them flappers, because they get sitting there smacking like that, the rubber in them around the edges will, uh, will fail. So that's uh, inspection. So you can, and the intake flappers are right in here and the discharge flappers you can get to from both sides. So very easy to change. Little inspection port right here in case you get a little sand uh, build up. Normally, probably the most typical trouble call on this is people call these mud hogs. So they're not, yes, they'll pump slurry of some sort. But what happens is, is people get down and they start pumping a lot of sand or a lot of mud and then they shut the pump off. Well, then the flappers come down, you got a bunch of mud in your chambers and it's not sealed. So they start it back up and they don't pull vacuum. Simplest thing I've, I've done is just introduce water into both things, hook your stuff back up, and that water kind of, you know, if it's filled up with water, then that's, you know, you close that seal with the water. So first couple strokes, it's gonna clean them flappers out and it's gonna go to pumping. So, I mean, basically, if you don't see any cracks here, if it's not spraying here, and you know, you can inspect your flappers, that's the two things that create the vacuum on this pump. That's what makes them so simple. All right, so uh, the last thing on this is, you know, replacing the uh, diaphragms in this. A lot of diaphragms, they don't come with the holes pre-drilled in them. So you want to make sure you center that diaphragm with this, drill your holes. And the most important thing is, is make sure because that diaphragm, you can move it back and forth, that you get it centered good both ways. Because if you, let's say this diaphragm was sticking out 
a quarter inch this way. When that thing's going on a downstroke and you can see it's pretty stretched, you know, that hole's right there and if it's off center, it's gonna rub up against that edge every come down. So centerness is very important. And then uh, we even put maybe a little silicone or whatever on both sides to help it seal. Torque these down evenly and don't over torque them. That's the biggest mistake also. So you don't want this corner, you know, start with one corner and tor torque it all the way down to the rest. You wanna evenly bring them four bolts down uh, another thing is when you replace the diaphragm, even though this is a pretty like three quarter inch plate right here, it's pretty narrow. It will, if you over torque it, bow like this, when you change the diaphragm, flip it over and bring it back down. It's not a big deal. And the last thing on this is you can also, when you're putting this diaphragm in, this bearing can swivel back and forth. You want to put that diaphragm in so that bearing is straight. Even if it's cocked sideways, it will work that way, but it's going to fail a whole lot sooner. Than just take the time and make sure this knuckle is straight. And as far as the flappers, there's usually a couple bolts holding them down. Like I said, you just go right in through here, a couple bolts, take it out, put the new flapper on it, put it back in. The plates are always on top. The weights are always on top of the flapper. And that's about it on this. As far as like oil changes and everything, I would uh, recommend you refer to the uh, manufacturer's manual on the service intervals. So most of them nowadays are around 500 hours. Here at Holland Pump, we try to keep it under 360 hours. Uh, you want to use a quality 15W40 motor oil. Uh, so right now I'm just going to go over a few things. So as far as like the fuel system on these, it's very important today to keep your fuel filters changed. Uh, we change them every two weeks. We change them when we uh, deliver the pump and set them up. Uh, all our pumps you go from the tank to the water separator, through the lift pump, and into the fuel system. Now a lot of engines will also have screens in the lift pump so this one does have a screen you'd want to keep that clean too you can just pull them out hit them with a little brake cleaner let them dry off and reinstall them so but very important to keep uh your fuel system clean it uh, really helps the longevity of your engine uh, next as far as like the oil on these uh all our pumps come with a quick disconnect you can get any little oil pump from Granger's or wherever mounted on a bucket and a little 12 volt. You can hook them right up to the battery and drain your oil through that. Uh, I do recommend when you're draining anything and creating vacuum inside a engine to, you know, either pull the dipstick out or take the oil filled cap off so you don't create a vacuum in there and damage seals. Uh, but like I said, I'd refer to the engine manufacturer. Uh, you should get a book when you purchase a pump from us that has all the maintenance on the engine and everything. So, like I said, most new engines are around 500 hour, but we try to keep them under 360. And we uh, we get a long life, average life out of all our engines here because of that. 